the autumn of 1967, a trio of seasoned musicians, originating from along the Hudson River in New York State, recorded their first LP. Released in the spring of 1968 on the Phillips label, the eponymous album was the result of many hours spent rehearsing late into the night after live shows, with just acoustic guitars, percussion and the harmony of their voices. It followed a period of the band performing constantly and being known under a different name, all the while absorbing the rock and roll lifestyle. came to New York City, we were the Teddy Boys, and we found ourselves living at the Chelsea Hotel for four and a half years. Upstairs we had uh, Nico and Jan Kramer, and one floor above us we had Edie Sedgwick, and there was Susan Bottomley, Viva, almost all of the Chelsea girls were there. We had a good time in El Quixote and down at Max's. But it was in these rooms where we used to play during the days and that we developed the sound for Mortimer. Um, basically just playing our guitars and banging on different things for drums. At night we would go off to Arthur of a discotheque, Sybil Burton's place, and we'd play until four in the morning and then we'd come back and we would start all over again banging on drums and playing guitars, having parties. Um, basically, it was a very good four and a half years. Manager Danny Secunda then took Mortimer to England in search of a new record deal. They played shows at the Marquee and clubs in Soho and Mayfair, where, much like their time in New York, they would play several shows a night and then sleep on Secunda's floor. We heard on the radio that Apple was looking for songs for Mary Hopkins and we were about to leave to go back to America and so we took the chance and went down to Savile Row and we went in and saw the, the lady at the desk um, and she said well you have to bring a tape we're taking tapes but I s took the chance and I said uh, but we're going back to America tomorrow and we, we don't have a tape, can we just play? Um, and she said, well, let me, let me find out. And she called up to talk to Mike O'Connor, who was head of publishing. And he sat us down in, on a couch, pretty much like these couches, couch there, a couch there. And we started playing Life Sweet Music from our Phillips album. And as we were in the middle of it, banging away, Suddenly, the door directly across from us came open, and there was uh, George Harrison dancing his way into the room, and we were su surprised. And we just we just kept playing, and suddenly he says, "Sign them up," and then he did a twirl and he danced out another door on the other side. Well, we finished life sweet music, and we, were, we didn't know what was going on, but. A few days later, we were signed to Apple Records and published it. I didn't know how much you felt for him. I didn't know how much you cared. Over the winter of 1968, Mortimer recorded the first album demos, and in February 1969, went into Trident Studios in central London to record the selected songs. The recordings were also to include On Our Way Home, an, as then, unreleased Beatles song, 
later retitled Two of Us, that Paul McCartney had personally given Mortimer to record as their inaugural Apple single. The recordings were produced by Apple A&R man Pete Asher, with extra arrangements by Richard Hewson and mastered during April 1969 in preparation for release. All that remained was the album cover artwork. After we finished the album, Peter Asher took us out for a couple of uh, photo shoots in different places. We had at some at uh, Regent's Park, and we were dressed in wonderful clothes. Then we did a shot in his his house up in Regent's Park, where he had a studio set up. And then he took us down to his place in the country where we had a, a boat ride out on his little lake. Um, it's kind of poignant because it looks like we're on our way back home. Mortimer's LP was scheduled to be released immediately after the Ivies, the other group signed by Apple, own debut in July 1969. But disaster struck when a change at the top of Apple's management saw the release put on hold. The Ivies album would sneak out in Japan, Italy and Germany, but the Mortimer album and the single, On Our Way Home, would never see the light of day. Essentially this is what Mortimer was and should be. There was two acoustic guitars and a Congo drum. That was Tommy Smith, Guy Masson, and that's myself, Tony Van Benskoten. There's our, that's our outfit that we used to play with. And this is us having a good time, which we used to do all the time. When we got into the actual studio, um, Peter had a and Hewson had arrangements set up for us. So it got changed a little bit, but it's still essentially what Mortimer was all about. And it's interesting thinking back 20, 48 years that here are these guys, 21 years old, and now we have their music finally released. In 1968, while we were in London, we heard on the radio that Apple Music was looking for songs for Mary Poppins. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>